जयो राधा माधव कुंजा बिहारी जयो राधा माधव कुंजा बिहारी गोपी जनावल गिरिबार गोपी जनावल गिरिबार दारी यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तिरा वनाचारी यमुना तिरा वनाचारी जो राधा माधव कुंजा बिहारी जयो राधा माधव कुंजा बिहारी गोपी जनावल गिरी बार धारी गोपी जनावल गिरी बार धारी यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तिरा वनाचारी यमुना तिरा वनाचारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Dama Hare Dama Rama Dama Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Dama, Hare Dama, Dama Dama, Hare Hare. <coughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Dama, Hare Dama, Dama Dama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Dama, Hare Dama, Namo Dama, Hare Hare. Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Srila Prabhupada. Jai Gauranitai, 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 Sri Sri Gauranitai. Jai Radha Gopinath, Radha Gopinath, Radha Jai Radha Gopinath. Jai Vishnu Padma Mangsa Parivraja Kacharya Shtotra Shtotra Shishi Mali Zivayan Grace. Bhai Charana Vrindam Bhakti Vinod Swami Maharaj Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vashta Vrinda Ki Jai Granthi Rashimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Go Premanandi Hari Hari Bo Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Today we are reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is 10th Canto, Chapter 49, entitled Akura's Mission to Hastinapura. And we are reading now verse 29. Please repeat. Yaha Durvi Marsha Pataya Nija Mayaya idam shrishtva gunan ibajate tat anupravishta tasmai namaha durava bodha vihara tantra samsara Chakra 
गथये परम ईश्वराय यो दूर विमर्श पत यो दूर विमर्श पत या निजमा ये इदम यो दूर विमर्श पत या निजमा ये इदम श्रीष्ठवां गुणन विभजते ददनु प्रविष्टः श्रीष्ठवां गुणन विभजते ददनु प्रविष्टः तस्माय नमो दुर्वबुधा विहारा तस्माय नमो दुरावबोध विहार तंत्रा तस्माय नमो दुरावबोध विहार तंत्र संसार चक्रगत ये परमेश्वराय संसार चक्रगत ये परमेश्वराय यो दूर विमर्श पतया निजमा ये इदम् शिष्टवां गुणन विभजते तदनु प्रविष्टा तस्माय नमो दुर्वब तस्माय नमो दुरावबोध विहार तंत्रा समसार चक्रगत ये परमेश्वराय तयनि जमाया ये दम इष्टवा गुणन विभजते तदनु प्रविष्टा स्माय नमो दुरावबोध विहार तंचा सार चक्रगत ये परमेश्वराय योर दूर विमर्श पतया निजमा ये इदम श्रीष्ठवा गुणन विभजते तदनु प्रविष्टं तस्माय नमो दुर्वाबोध विहारतंचं लेडीज यो दूर विमर्श पतया निजमा ये इदम् शिष्टवा गुणन विभजते तदनु प्रविष्टं तस्माय नमो दुर्वबोध विहारतंत्रं समसार चक्रगत ये परमेश्वरायम यहाँ हु दुर्विम दुर्विमर्शा इनकंसीवेबल पतया उस पथ निजा बाय हिज ओन माया क्रिएटिव एनर्जी इदम दिस यूनिवर्स Shishtva, creating. Gunan, its modes. Vibhajate, he distributes. Tat, within it. Anupravishtaha, entering. Tasmai, to him. Namaha, obeisances. Durava Buddha, unfathomable. Vihara, 
of those pastimes. Tantra, the purport, samsara, of birth and death, chakra, the cycle, gataye, and liberation, coming from whom? Parama Ishvaraya, the Supreme Controller. Translation and purpose by the servants of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada. I offer my obeisance to Him, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who creates this universe by the inconceivable activity of His material energy and then distributes the various modes of nature by entering within the creation. From Him, the meaning of whose pastimes is unfathomable, come both the entangling cycle of birth and death and the process of deliverance from it. Please repeat, I offer my obeisance to Him, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who creates this universe by the inconceivable activity of His material energy. and then distributes the various modes of nature by entering within the creation. From Him, the meaning of whose pastimes is unfathomable, come both the entangling cycle of birth and death and the process of deliverance from it. Pepot, when all is said and done, Dhritarashtra was not an ordinary person, but an associate of the Supreme Lord Krishna. Certainly an ordinary person could not offer such a learned hymn to the Lord. I just read the next two verses, 30. Shukadeva Goswami said, having thus apprised himself of the king's attitude, Akura, the descendant of Yadu, took permission from his well-wishing relatives and friends and returned to the capital of the Yadavas. And 31, Akura reported Lord Balaram and Lord Krishna how Dhritarashtra was behaving toward the Pandavas. Thus, O descendant of Kurus, he fulfilled the purpose for which he had been sent. Thus, in the purpose of the humble servants of his divine grace, as he Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, of the 10th canto, 49th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Akura's mission to Hastinapura. Om Agyana Timinan Dasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chak Shurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. So, this verse has come to me as a surprise. Surprise <clears throat> in the sense that that's not something which we would, I would at least expect to hear from Dhritarashtra. We always hear about his attachment, being impartial to his sons. And, of course, as we heard, he did uh, get the credit of speaking the first verse of the Bhagavad Gita. But in that verse, Mamaka, Pandavas, Cheva, these are my sons, and that attitude which uh, complicated things greatly, uh, as we know. But here, we hear a very deeply philosophical verse, and that is Dhritarashtra. And true, in the purport, we hear that Dhritarashtra was not an ordinary person, but an associate of the Supreme Lord Krishna. So this is just a point uh, which, uh, for me, serves as an interesting and a illuminating point uh, about the nature of a, of a Dhritarashtra as an associate of Krishna. That verse very much rem uh, reminds me of the invocation of the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the first verse. It's really a grave verse, and please allow me to just read the first verse of the Bhagavatam, the invocation. It starts, of course, with Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, then Janmadhyasya Etaha, Dvayadi Taratash, Chateshu Abhigya Svarat, Tene Brahma Ridaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha. 
te jovari mridanyata vinimayo yatra tri salgo mrisha tamna svena sada nirasta kuakam satyam palam dimahi which is quite similar in many ways please allow me to read the translation O my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudev, O all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifest universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestation and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge under the heart of Brahma, Brahmaji, the original living being. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universe temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, whose eternal existence in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Hmm. This is Satyam Param Dimahi. So, our verse the verse we have now very much reflects upon uh, this beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam about this great invocational verse which reflects upon the beginning of the Brahma Sutra. The first verse of the Brahma Sutra are also uh, indicated here such as Janma Adhyasya Yataha. So, returning to our own verse, uh, we have here that idea of the creation by the inconceivable activity of the material energy and distribution of the various modes of nature by entering within the creation. And one may ask, what is the importance of trying to understand the creation. This idea returns time and again where one should understand the creation of this universe. And apparently that is a very uh, important idea. So much so that also contemporary or material science is very much uh, absorbed in these questions and their various approaches and theories. Of course, evolution is uh, accepted these days. So the idea of creation is very uh, important and being able to rationalize uh, spiritual and Krishna conscious conception of the creation is perhaps one of the foundations of getting delivered uh, from uh, this world. Of course, Janma Karma, Chame Divyam, Evam Yo, Veti Tattvataha, Tyaktva Deham, Punar Janma Na, Naiti Punar Janma, Naiti Mam, Eti Sarjuna. So that's Bhagavad Gita, that's a 4.9, and that speaks about understanding the um, activities of the Supreme Lord. But let us look a little deeper into the idea of a creation. And let us remind ourselves of the idea of devolution. Devolution descending evolution, which is the uh, foundation of Sankhya philosophy. And accordingly, the Purusha and the Prakriti are originally separated. 
the Purusha, the conscious living entity, the spirit soul, has nothing to do with Prakriti. Prakriti, in fact, is in a dormant state, in a potential state, Pradhan. What is a potential state? I don't know if we try to use a contemporary example. It will be like, I guess, a computer program which is not running. It's there potentially, but it's, it's nothing. The computer is just hardware, I don't know, something like that. But it doesn't come to life. So that's the state of Prakriti before the Purusha uh, enters into it. But then, for some reason, unexplicable in some ways, the Purusha enters, if you like, falls, drips into that Prakriti. And once it drips into that Prakriti, it starts mobilizing it. It starts activating it. It gives it life. And the various elements are created. The various three gunas, they come into life. They need the purusha to be alive. And once they're alive, the various elements are created by the interactions of the different modes. Umir, Apon, Alo, Vayu, Kam, Ano, Budhirevacha, Ahankara, Itiya, Mebina, Prakriti, Rashtada. The five gross elements are there. Earth, Bumi, water, fire, air, ether. Three uh, subtle elements, mind, Buddhi, Ahankara, and the senses, Gyanendriya, the five uh, knowledge acquiring senses, and the working senses, Karmendriya, the five uh, working senses with which the living entity works or finds itself, moves the world, manipulates the world, and then the vishaya, the sense objects which correspond to the senses are there, and the living entity finds itself within the three gunas. And the more it tries to figure out its state, the more it tries to act in this material world, the more it gets further entangled. It just loses the ability to return to the source. And it becomes like a banyan tree. And we have that example in the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, of that banyan tree which is so complicated, which is composed of so many components, sense objects, the gunas, previous activities, desires. It is so complicated that one cannot even uh, begin to understand the source and the root. Therefore, one has to cut this uh, with an axe of knowledge and surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In fact, that part of the Bhagavad Gita I very much like, love it. This first six verses of the 15th chapter, which perhaps give us the whole story, the whole uh, path to be marched in only six verses to uh, understand that tree by cutting it, giving up pride, 
surrendering to the supreme personality of God and searching that place where <coughs> one can find that place beyond birth and death and even having coming there it is not sufficient but once having come there one surrenders to the supreme lord even getting all the way to the spiritual world is not sufficient because it's not just getting there but establishing personal relationships with the lord and surrendering not just entering the palace but actually establishing relationship with the supreme lord so that is quite a challenge quite quite an adventure if you like makes life quite uh, adventurous in a spiritual sense of what we can do in this lifetime what we can do in this situation in this circumstance and how fortunate we are to be in a position to be able to read such knowledge to be able to practice such knowledge and to be able to be in the proximity of Lord Krishna and his devotees so that is a very a, a, a great a, a, a knowledge which we have here so anyhow returning to the point of creation when one has this idea this proper idea of creation that is in many ways a, a foundation from which one can be liberated in many ways knowledge also is under the gunas and we have that also in the Bhagavad Gita in the 18th chapter which describes various manifestations of the gunas so knowledge also is there under these categories and we can say that the scientific knowledge which is nowadays uh, accepted in many way is rajasic it is passionate it is rajasic it divides the world and learns through contradiction it builds up theories of understanding through comparison anumana basically not shabda anumana taking one thing building up and it is rajasic because it describes the world through uh, the differences it doesn't offer a unifying a simplifying principle that is basically the academic knowledge and in many ways we can trace uh, the roots already to ancient Greek we have very interestingly in ancient Greek we have both Plato and Aristotle and Plato is much more spiritual Krishna conscious in many ways he sees this world as a reflection of the real world very much like the way we see this world and like the way the uh, 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita describes that this banyan tree and Srila Prabhupada explains that in the purport reflects the spiritual world this world is a perverted reflection we have here variety just like we have in the spiritual world but here the variety is imperfect it is touched by the three gunas and it is temporary we have forms but these forms are subjected to samsara birth death old age and disease so it's almost there but it's not the real thing and Srila Prabhupada explains in that purport in the beginning of the 15th chapter that it is like a tree which stands on the bank of a lake and looking into the water that is what we see that is uh, the example of this world this world is like that not the real tree but the reflected tree you can look at the tree it's almost like a real tree I mean it looks like a tree you see everything but it's not real it's almost real but it's not real it even moves it's like a mirror 
but it's not the real form. <coughs> it's a reflection, a limited uh, reflection. So that is a very a, a great type of knowledge uh, which we are receiving from the Bhagavad Gita, from the Srimad Bhagavatam, and just returning to the Gita and to uh, these verses about knowledge, that is that will be sattvic type of knowledge. Sattvic type of knowledge is knowledge which unites, which will show the spiritual element in creation, which will not look at the differences, but uh, be unifying. So that is the idea of creation which we want to maintain. We want to maintain the idea of creation which links us to Krishna. In that we see creation in many ways as a manifestation of our own ego. Our own ego and if you look at that Sankhya theory, understanding of creation, the element which connects a matter and spirit, the element which connects the soul, Purusha and Prakriti, the most subtle glue, if you like, is Ahankara, is ego. And that's where it all starts. That false notion that Ahamkara, I'm the doer. Very subtle notion, which is a certain type of conviction that I belong here. This is my real home. I belong to matter. I am material. Matter can explain my existence. So that notion that ahankara is the subtle shackle, the subtle uh, element which locks us into this uh, material world. And as such, if you can gradually give up this ahankara, give up this notion and replace it with a real self-notion of I am a servant of Krishna. That gradually will uh, dissolve this uh, material uh, attachment, this material identification <coughs> and this uh, very deep uh, connection uh, to this uh, material world. So now we also have in this verse, uh, after having mentioned the, uh, the creation of this universe, and then we hear about the distribution of the various modes of nature. And that is also a very significant uh, knowledge uh, which we have. I'm looking at the knowledge which Shula Prabhupada has given us, and I see here a very great, a very great body of knowledge, if you like. We are fortunately the inheritors of a very great tradition of knowledge. Of course, Srila Prabhupada has established many things in these 11 years. It's unbelievable how many things Srila Prabhupada has established. Harinam and Sankirtan and, and deity worship and temples and, and, and farms and an unlimited list. But let us just now put these aside and look at Srila Prabhupada as an author. Let's look about his uh, literary, literary uh, project. And some say that this is 
a, perhaps his most important project, giving the books, coming to this world and giving all these books, so many books and so important books. So now I'm kind of looking at Srila Prabhupada as an author. Actually, I'm not the first one to do that, of course. And Tamal Krishna Goswami, in his, in his uh, work, in his PhD, which he almost completed before he left us, he was trying to categorize Srila uh, Prabhupada as a philosopher, as a, a theologian, and to see what Srila Prabhupada has given in terms of philosophy, in terms of theology. Uh, I did have a very sweet exchange with uh, Tamal Krishna Goswami, which I like to speak about. I won't speak too much about it. But as things happened, uh, we were going to the school, these schools in the UK at the same time. And I was studying in Oxford. He was studying in Cambridge. Uh, that was in, the, in 1999, 2000, 2001. And uh, I came to visit him in Cambridge when he was there and we were all a little nervous about each other's scholarship. We didn't want that we copy from each other. So because we were so close in our thoughts, we were all devotees coming from the same place. So he took me to the room and said, now I'll tell you what is my main uh, statement in my work but you don't tell anyone before that's published. Now it's published, it's okay, we can say. So I said, no, Maharaj, I will not tell anyone. <laughs> what is that? So he said, Srila uh, Prabhupada's Mahavakya, his big statement in all his work is Krishna's two Bhagavan Svayam. He told me, he said, that's Tamar Krishna Maharaj said. He said, that's the way I see Srila Prabhupada's one big Mahavakya, one big statement which covers uh, all of his philosophy. Like if you take Shankara and you say Tattva Masi, and that's a Mahavakya which represents Shankara's Advaita Vedanta. Tattva Masi and everything else is an expansion. So he said, here, Srila Prabhupada, as a philosopher who comes to the world, he says, Krishna's two Bhagavan Svayam. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. So, that is a way of trying to see the essence. Having mentioned Srila Prabhupada's books and literary uh, work, his philosophical uh, creation, I'm trying to examine it and see which categories of literature did Srila Prabhupada give. And the way I see it is I see four groups of literature, four groups of knowledge, I would say. Then I would say, first, we have the Bhagavad Gita, which is the first book Srila Prabhupada wrote before doing the Srimad Bhagavatam. And that is the foundation, foundation upon which Srila Prabhupada's philosophy uh, rests. The Bhagavad Gita deals with everything, deals with the whole world, desire, the gunas, the soul, creation, notions of divinity, rasoham, absukunteya, we didn't get into that, but the way one can see Krishna in this creation, maybe we'll return after to the question of how the Lord enters the creation. It's also here in the verse that the Lord enters the creation in an inconceivable way. Devotion, bhakti, surrender, sarva dharma paritya preaching, everything is there in the uh, yoga, everything is there in the Bhagavad Gita. Very, very wide scripture uh, which can actually encompass the whole world and to my mind can become a world a philosophy for the 21st century, but this is another topic. After that, we have the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
And that is perhaps Srila Prabhupada's most important uh, literary project. His main book would be perhaps the Srimad Bhagavatam. His main his life work, literary life work, would be this translation and purpose of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And the Srimad Bhagavatam goes beyond the Bhagavad Gita into the nature of the Supreme Lord, incarnations, avatars, devotees, surrender, and builds up the whole culture of devotion. And then the Srimad Bhagavatam comes from the 10th canto, which is what we are reading now, <coughs> and has these wonderful pastimes of Krishna, which are in many ways <coughs> the peak uh, of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Of course, the Bhagavad Gita uh, is also uh, there in the Bhagavad Gita in the form of the Uddhava Gita in the 11th uh, canto. Then, following that, we have the Sri Chitana Charita Amrita. The Sri Chitana Charita Amrita, that book gives us the whole Chaitanya ethos, the whole Chaitanya culture, which is quite different from the Vedic ethos or culture. We have to recognize that. That gives us our Sampradaya identity. Many things which we are doing now, Kirtan, Prashadam, uh, festivals, that's the Chaitanya ethos. That's the Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Dancing kirtans. Of course, we have it also uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, always chanting my glories, glorifying me. But that particular way in which we chant with mridangas and kartals and hari bol and dance, that's the special sampradaya uh, culture, the Chaitanya culture. Sankitan. We go out in Sankitan to preach, following Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas Thakur, going uh, from uh, door to door uh, 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 to preach. We have uh, these feasts. That's in the Chaitanya Charita Amrita. We open Advaita Acharya uh, hosting Lord Chaitanya and how uh, there's a whole list of the various preparations there which were cooked. And uh, distributing prashadam, we have it. The Lord dancing before the Ratha Yatra and Jagannath Puri. That's all uh, uh, the Chaitanya Vaishnava uh, culture, which is part of our culture. So we have the Gita, uh, one of the only ones who have the Gita. We have the Bhagavatam, uh, which is much more, of course, a Vaishnava literature. But then we have our special uh, Sampradaya uh, culture, which is the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is, of course, a Bengali literature, also written in uh, Bengali, uh, not Sanskrit. And then we have the fourth uh, book, a single book, which is uh, the Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And the Nectar of Devotion is the actual manual of how to be a devotee, how to practice being a devotee, how to uh, dif differentiates between uh, Raganuga Bhakti and uh, Vaidhi Bhakti, looks into the philosophy of devotion, what is rules and regulations, what is spontaneous devotion. It describes the nature of devotional service. Uh, it gives a scriptural, uh, 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 scriptural examples of devotional service. And it gives actual principles, 64 principles residing in Vrindavan or the Holy Dham and uh, uh, worshipping Tulsi. The various, uh, the various uh, manual for actual life of being a devotee, a devotee in the line of, of Rupa Goswami, uh, a Gaudiya Vaishnava devotee, how to do that? The Ten Offenses, it's all there in the nectar of devotion. So that's I would say, uh, uh, an attempt to categorize 
Srila Prabhupada's books in terms of uh, philosophy, theology, or the, uh, the <coughs> body of knowledge which Srila Prabhupada uh, has given us. So we have the Bhagavad Gita, that is a universal scripture, a scripture which certainly can become an old Indian book uh, in which we have a very uh, strong uh, uh, grounding in. I was just a point, interesting point. I was uh, uh, giving a lecture on the Gita in one conference in New Delhi a few years ago. That was a conference about something. And I was giving a lecture, a scholarly conference, not devotional, uh, on the potential of the Gita uh, uh, for as a future global source of ethics. <coughs> so after my lecture, a, a professor came to me and said, I very much liked your lecture. It was a great lecture. So I said, thank you sir, very much. And he said, you'll be surprised that I'm a Muslim and I am a professor of uh, Islamic history. I teach at uh, JNU, a 13th century, uh, 13th century uh, Delhi Sultanate uh, history. But still he said, the Gita is our national book. And I was very impressed by that. Here you have a professor, a Muslim, and he's very open in saying, yes, the Gita is our pride. Our means Indian. So to my mind, the Gita has a great potential, certainly in the Indian uh, cultural milieu, uh, but also beyond that, uh, as going above Hinduism and uh, uh, representing our message, and being Iskand devotees and being followers of Srila Prabhupada, we naturally have a very strong grasp of the Gita. Perhaps much more than other groups, we have a strong uh, Gita ideology. We love the Gita, we study the Gita, we, we take it as Krishna's words, and it is a great potential for universalization. I'm just not sure, when are we supposed to, or we stop at 9.15? I see, okay. So I think I'll just conclude here. Uh, so many things to say, but always give a taste for more. So basically, uh, I try to say a few words about creation, about uh, the nature of uh, knowledge. Uh, I wanted to develop more the theme of knowledge in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, and the nature of knowledge and how knowledge can uh, liberate oneself from uh, this world, but perhaps next time. So I, I stop here and ask if there are any questions uh, or comments on this point. We have three minutes, we can have some discussion. Let's enjoy the time till the last second. <laughs> Come on, don't be shy, you can have discussion, it's nice. <laughs> Studying is nice. I very much want to see ISKCON as a studying institute where everyone studies and teach. I mean, there are various uh, ideas of what ISKCON is and to my mind, I mean, different people have their ideas. I would see it as a, as a school. Everyone is absorbed in studying and teaching and uh, I, I actually want to emphasize this uh, within ISKCON. Uh, I mean, famous, famous uh, Guru Shloka, <coughs> 434 in the Bhagavad Gita, Tad vidhi prani patena pari prashnena sevaya upadeksya dite gyanam gyaninastatva darshina. So we have this pari prashnena, means asking questions as part of the relationship. Of course, we have falling at the feet uh, of the spiritual master and service. Of course, we have it, very important. But that aspect of studying, this intellectual, intellectualizing our tradition, the body of knowledge we have, establishing schools, studying it ourselves, teaching it to others, uh, trying to understand the great uh, knowledge uh, uh, we have, and we have a very uh, great uh, uh, legacy uh, of knowledge, uh, and that is uh, no doubt. Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.